Talking to Sailing God's People with your host, Dennis Beard. Talking about prophet to the nation, Jeremiah. What seest thou, Jeremiah? Said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Thy as well singing, I'll hasten my word to perform it, the Lord said. The rod of an almond tree. Almond in the Hebrew is luz. Bethel was first called luz. So it's a rod of luz or Bethel or a rod of the church. Now, in uh, he, we see that also in Revelation 11, 1. There was a reed like unto a rod given unto me, John said, saying, Rise, measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without, leave out and measure it not, is given to the Gentiles. The holy city shall be trodden underfoot, 42 months, time, times and a half, three and a half years, 1,203 score days. At that time, God will give power to his two witnesses. The two witnesses are not two men, even though it's called two prophets, because it's the spirit of prophecy. When you find that key given by the Lord in John 8, 13 through 27, about the witnesses. Notice that Jesus, whenever the Pharisees came to him, they said that, Jesus, you bear record of yourself. Your record's not true. Jesus said, though I bear record of myself, my record is true because I'm not alone. Now all they could see was Jesus. They didn't understand that he is that spirit, that he is the Father. He is, and his essence and being always has been and always will be God. They just see a man there. So they said, Jesus, you bear record of yourself. Your record's not true. Jesus said, though I bear record of myself, my record is true because I'm not alone. He's referencing the other man, that he is that spiritual man, which is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty, God himself, the Father of glory. And he goes on and explains that truth. He said, it's written in your law, the testimony of two men is true. Now notice he changes record, that record, that three that bear record in heaven, the Father, Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. Many will make a mistake and say that it's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's not what it said. In uh, 1 John 5, 7, it states, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, not Son. Now, some, American Standard, etc., will leave out 1 John 5, 7 and Father, Word, and Holy Ghost and just say, the Spirit is truth. Well, either translation is correct. The Spirit is one Spirit. And that's what is stated in the King James Version. It's one Spirit. Now, there's three different functions or offices of that Spirit and the King James Version, the authorized version, states that. Father, Word, and Holy Ghost. Not Son. Son has two components. The Spirit of God without measure, revealed in a body of flesh and blood. So there's two components. The Spirit and a flesh and blood man. That's the Son of God. That the Son of God in the his essence is the Father of glory, the everlasting Father. He is the mighty God, as you see in Isaiah 9, 6. In Isaiah 9, 5, it says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall rest upon his shoulder, singular. The only thing rested upon Jesus' shoulder was the cross. The cross is the government of God. Then his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, not the mighty Son of God. That's where we have to take the Word of God in revelation of the Holy Ghost, the everlasting Father, not the everlasting Son, the Prince of Peace. That government rests upon Jesus' shoulder is the cross. That cross is the government of God where Jesus states that if any man will come after me, let him first deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. But we have now crossless Christianity. Now that rod is commensurate with sufferings. 
everybody wants the glory. They want the power with God. They want to reign and rule with God, but very few want and understand suffering. Tribulation works with patience. Patience works with experience, and experience works with hope. Hope makes us not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. That read like unto a rod given unto John, Revelation 11, 1, there to rise and measure the temple of God. The temple of God is not a physical iron or a brick and mortar temple. It's the temple, naos, the temple of God. We see that also in Zechariah 2, that there was a measuring rod, and it lined that would be measuring the temple of God. Then in Zechariah 3, we have a change of raiment. A change is happening. We find that Joshua is there before the Lord. Satan comes uh, to resist him. He said, the Lord rebuked you. The Lord said, the Lord rebuked you, Satan. And he states there what this is. Is this a brand? This is a brand plucked out of the fire. What brand? That's a seal. The brand, if you're going to brand a cattle of ownership, or put your seal on that cattle that you are branding, and especially here in Texas, there are many ranchers, and they buy a head of cattle, and when they do, they take and put their brand on that cattle. By doing so, that's their sign of ownership. Well, this is a brand plucked out of a fire. That fire is, we see, the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's a brand plucked out of the fire. It's what we see to those that understand the Spirit, what Spirit is saying to the churches. It's the same as the cherubim coming out of a fire, and fire than the color of amber in Ezekiel 1.5, has the appearance of a man. Coming out of the fire, and their appearance is the appearance of a man. That man is Jesus Christ the Lord, as the head and the body of Christ, meaning that we have come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And they four had their four faces, face of a lion, man, ox, and eagle, which are the cherubim, as we see in Ezekiel 10, by the river Kibar, which were the cherub- cherubim of glory. Well, then the cherubim we find are the olive trees. And that's what the reed like into a rod. There in Revelation 11, 1, that John is seeing when he's given that power, that rod. The reed like into a rod, saying, Rise, measure the temple of God, the altar, and them that worship therein. We find that also that when he gives power to his two witnesses there in Revelation 11, that they are the two olive trees. The two candlesticks, we know the candlesticks given to us in the Revelation is the church. Or the candlesticks are the churches. So we know there, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea, seven churches. There, seven being the perfect number of God, perfection. And we know there's many more churches in Asia than just the seven but it's just teaching us the perfection of the church. But the two olive trees gives us the identity. And they say, well, there's two men, two prophets, two witnesses. And Jesus gave us that revelation himself about what and who the two witnesses are. He stated there in John 8, 13. Back to John 8, 13 again. The Pharisees came to Jesus. They did not understand who he is. And they said, Jesus, you bear record of yourself. Your record is not true. He is that one spirit. And Jesus said, though I bear record of myself, my record is true. Regardless if you go American Standard Version, where it just said, this spirit is the truth in 1 John 5, 7. Or whether you go, the King James Version, there's three to bear record in heaven. 
the Father, Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. It's one and the same. There's one spirit there. Three different functions of that one spirit. Father is the administrative office of the spirit. The Word is the expression office of that same spirit, revealing the thought, plan, purpose, and will of God. And then you have the Holy Ghost. That's a power office of that same spirit. It's one and the same same spirit. There we find that Jesus is stating there that he is that one spirit in John 8, 13. He says he's not alone. He said, I'm not alone. I'm one that beareth witness of myself, beareth record of myself, and the Father that sent me, he beareth record of me. Then he explains it. Notice he goes from record to testimony. And then the testimony there is of two men. That's what we see in Revelation 11. Two men, two witnesses, two olive trees, two candlesticks. Well, what are they? Are they just two people, Moses and Elijah? Or some say Enoch and Elijah? No, absolutely, obviously not. It reveals to us the two candlesticks. Obviously, in Revelation 1, the candlesticks are the churches. And there's not just two churches. And the two olive trees. And we look up the olive trees. Where do they come from? Well, we see in 1 Kings 6, and we find there in 1 Kings 6.23, that there are two olive trees, these two cherubim of glory, that are made of olive trees. And we go on and see that up on the walls of the cedar, the cedar work, that God said in Zephaniah 2, he would uncover the cedar work at that time that he would famish all the gods of the earth literally tear every god down that was exalted against him. There, when we see in Isaiah 44, 8, that there is only but one God, and he'll say, there beside me there is uh, no God, none beside me. Then he will say, there is no other God. I know not any. Well, there's only one God. We understand that. But in that verse, the God mentioned there always is Elohim throughout the word of God. But we find that the first mention of that God is Elohim. The second is Sor, T-S-O-R, which means rock or stone or adversary. God says there is uh, no adversary to him. The devil has absolutely no power against God. Absolutely none. It is absolutely considered before God as nothing. There's not some war in heaven, and God can't take care of his adversary. There is no other adversary. There's no other God. It's him alone. He states that. Well, when we understand that we are coming to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ, that that is throne room revelation. It's a much higher revelation than Pentecost in Acts, the second chapter, in the dispensation of grace in the church age. It's much higher because we're going into the third season. We're in the second season now of Pentecost. Now, in the third season of Tabernacles, that's when we come to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. The church comes unto perfection, full measure of Jesus. It's a higher glory. And that is exactly what the revelation of Jesus Christ is in your last book in the Word of God. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him to show unto his servants the one serving God unto righteousness, unto holiness, the throne room revelation, things which must shortly come to pass. He sent and signified it. 
by his angel unto John. It's signed, it's signed, it's sealed. There we see in 1 Kings 6.23 that these two olive trees are made of the cherubim. That's what they're made of. And these cherubim, uh, which are the living creatures of Revelation 4, the zoe are one and the same that we read about in Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 10. Notice in Ezekiel 9, we have the sealing of the ones that are crying out for the sins and abominations done in Jerusalem. And there are six men with a weapon by their side, but then there is one that has an inkhorn. The six have a destroying weapon, but there is the seventh one. He has a rider, rider's inkhorn by his side to set a mark on those that are crying out for the sins and abominations done in Jerusalem. The ones that are crying out for the sins and abominations done now, left enough sparing not and show God's people their sin, are the ones that will be sealed. And it's not an Aloth, Beth, Gamal, Daleth. It's the last letter of the Hebrew ABC diary. That mark is a Tav. It's he that overcome it to the end. It's the last letter of the Hebrew ABC diary, which is salvation, but it also is the sign of the cross. And that's where we have uh, the cross, which is so essential for salvation that we have to crucify the flesh with the affections of the lust in order to do the will of God. We have to mortify the deeds of the flesh. And that's where sufferings come in. We have a crossless Christianity today for the most part. Now, there is a true body of Christ. They know sufferings are the government of God. That's what rested upon Jesus' shoulder was the cross. That those that Paul said, if I glory at all, I glory in the cross. Why? And he said, when I'm weak, then am I strong. Therefore, I glory in all my afflictions. Well, to understand that, we have to understand what Jesus said. Any man come after me, let him first deny himself. Deny yourself will. Deny what you want to do and your purpose and your will for your life and lay that aside and to do the will of God. And whosoever will lose his life for the gospel's sake, the same shall find it. But whosoever will seek to save his life, do his own will, thinking he's going to do his own purpose, will lose it. That's where the cross comes in. And many, when they set their hand to do something and they're called of God, that it comes to naught. And they wonder why. Why did this not work out? Why did that come to a van of vanity and vexation of spirit? Why didn't this work in business? Why didn't that work uh, whenever I was given a job and then it didn't work out? Well, the answer is God has a call on your life. Does that mean that you lose every job that you do? No. Does it mean that you lose all your blessings? No. But it does mean that many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered them out of them all. The cross is an essential for salvation. And in that valley, in the valley of decision, a person in their life will make that decision to lose their life for the gospel's sake, doing the will of God. They crucify the flesh with the affections of the lust. They mortify the deeds of the flesh. They set their own will aside to do the will of God. And the ones that do that will be pleasing to the Lord. In uh, Romans 12, 1, it tells us how we learn the voice of God and to do the will and know the purpose of God. We can prove it. And that is only by presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world. We cannot be conformed to this world and please God. All that love the world there, the love of the Father is not in them. All that's of the world, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh, and the world passes away for the lust thereof. But whosoever does the will of God will abide forever. Well, why do we have to have this suffering? First Peter 4.1 tells us in his epistle exactly why. 
for as much then Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. That's how he did it. Make the captain of our salvation perfect through sufferings, having learned obedience through the things which he suffered. Then, that is our example. And he states that in 1 Peter 4.1. For as much then Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, we are to arm ourselves with the same mind, be therefore likewise minded. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Why? Because you mortify the deeds of the flesh and you there count yourself dead unto sin, but alive unto God. Well, you were servants to sin, now you're servants unto righteousness, unto holiness and obedience. Anybody that says that you do not have to obey the leading of the Holy Ghost is a liar. In Romans 6, whosoever you yield your members as servants to obey him, are you the servants to whom you obey? Whether of sin unto death, even though you have the Holy Ghost Christ in you, you don't obey it. It still is a carnal mind and yields forth sin, resulting in death. Or of obedience unto righteousness, which yields the peaceable fruits of holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. The choice is ours. And that's the reason we align our will with the will of God and crucify the flesh in order to do the will of God. That's how you prove the purpose and will of God in your life. You present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and accepted unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. What the devil does is say, well, you're going to have a transformation in the flesh. You don't transform the flesh, you crucify it. And that's where we get this woke ideology that you, if you decide that you are not want to be born a male or on the opposite side a female, that you can literally transform yourself into another gender. And then you have uh, focused on the flesh. And anytime you focus on the flesh, letting it have its way and deal in the fleshly realm, in the worldly realm, and love this world, that love of the Father is not there and it leads to total vanity and vexation of the Spirit and it comes to naught. There's nothing good that comes out of it. Only those that do the will of God in crucifying the flesh with the affections of the lust, presenting their bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, in other words, following the leading of the Holy Ghost. Why? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for you is. And each one of us have a different calling. Not all called to be apostles. Not all are called to be prophets. Not all are called to be teachers. Not all are called for gifts of healing, gifts of miracles, or helps, or governments. But each are called according to the purpose and will of God, and we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. No, it's God that worketh in us, both the will and the do of his good pleasure, not ours. That's called a sacrificial life. But that pretty much has been taboo. It has been literally cast down in the churches across this Christianity that there's no such thing that you have to crucify your flesh with the affections and the less mortifying the deeds of the flesh that you can have the world and Jesus too. We have a crossless Christianity. Those that understand that know that they're enemies of the cross and they're enemies of the cross because they will not subject themselves to mortifying the deeds of the flesh but think they can have God and the world too. It's called a prosperity gospel which is a lie. Those that are going to be used of God in this last day work of the ministry, <clears throat> having throne room revelation, there are the living creatures, the zoe, the beast before the throne of God, and a lion, man, calf, calf, and eagle in Revelation 4 and 5, which are the redeemed of the Lord, will be the ones that are sealed in Revelation 7 that God is doing now for the work that is just ahead for all of us in the body of Christ. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world for witness in all nations, and then the end will come. And whosoever overcometh to the end, the same shall be saved. God 
is calling us out of the world now in order to do his will for those that have uh, the spirit, their eyes open to the leading uh, and seeing the revelation of Jesus and their ears open to the voice of the Lord. If any man have an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. God is calling his body together now and he has uh, uh, commissioned us and in our ministry here, DBM, Dennis Spirit Ministries, to put this out before the body of Christ to join us in a, not for any of our righteousness or holiness, but in a, a move of God that he will fitly frame this body together, his body, and then he will compact it, seal it, according to the measure of each part, according uh, to each individual's purpose and will, fitly framed together, of whichever joint supplies to the death fighting of itself and love, growing up into Jesus in all truth. Until the body of Christ comes together, it will never happen. And that's where we have to come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Notice that in Malachi 4, that remember my servant Moses, behold, I send you Elijah. He'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the children to the fathers. That's one mind, one accord in the body of Christ, not in a Pentecostal realm, but in a tabernacle. Not Pentecostals, but tabernacalists. Walk in the light, he's in the light, in the last season of God and to perfection. And the normal churches have pretty well said and stated you can't be perfect in this lifetime. Directly opposite of what the Lord said in Matthew 5, 6 and 7 in the constitution of the kingdom of heaven, be you therefore perfect as your Father and Heavenly Father is perfect. Most do not agree to that. Whom he did foreknow, them he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Those that he predestinated, them he called. Them that he called, he justified. Them that he justified, he also glorified to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Now, God has shown forth his glory in the face of Jesus. Jesus had four faces in the lion, man, ox, and eagle that we see in Genesis 3.24. Cherubim at the east end of the garden of God, capital C. Now, we are in that forerunner has already entered in as our way or the truth and our example to follow that we, with the cherubim, small c, the living creatures, the zoe, are the beasts before the throne of God. God is giving us throne room revelation now to those that have an ear to hear. It is not Pentecostal. Far from it. It's much higher in glory. And you'll see that in Revelation 4 and Revelation 5. God's doing that now. When we find the lion, man, calf, and eagle, they will be the ones in Revelation 6 that say, come and see and preach this everlasting gospel. These will be the ones that God will uh, have the sealing of the servants of God in their forehead. These are the ones that will proclaim this everlasting gospel to all the world for witness unto all nations. And then the end will come. That's what God is doing now. It's a carved work. It's a seal work. We find that in 1 Kings 6, that upon the walls, when he's uncovering the cedar work, the walls of cedar has their cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers on the walls with an engraving of an engraver. That's the sealing. And those are the walls of salvation. It's not in the sanctuary, the Pentecostal move. It's not there before the the veil. It's within the veil. It's throne room revelation. That's what we're seeing in Revelation 4, verse 1, that John states, There was a door open to me in heaven, a voice of a trumpet talking with me. That's a ministry voice of Jesus for the work of the ministry. Saying, come up hither. Don't stay in a Pentecostal realm. Come up hither. Come up higher. A higher glory. Going from faith to faith, from glory to glory. 
and I'll show you things. It's not a rapture. I'll show you things. It's the things of faith. Time you see things, it's faith. Now faith, not yesterday faith, not tomorrow's faith. Now faith is the substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things not seen. The things seen are temporal. The things not seen are eternal. And John is in within the throne room, within the veil, showing us things which must shortly come to pass. These are things that he states in Revelation 4.1 that is not a rapture. That's where the nominal church world has missed it. It is a higher revelation in the glory of Jesus, growing up in him in all truth. And he says that, that daily, that door was open in heaven, a voice of a trumpet talking with him, saying, come up hither and I will show you things that will come to pass hereafter, showing him things. And he was in the throne room. He saw four and twenty seats and four and twenty elders and four beasts before the throne of God. This is a man child caught up to God into his throne in Revelation 12. These are the ones that are the remnant of the church's seed, the women, the remnant of her seed that keep the commandments of God. The ones that keep the commandments of God are the ones that love God. And they have the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is the faith that was once delivered to the saints in the present truth and the preceding word of God that we see in Revelation 14, 12. They keep the commandments of God, which are the redeemed, and they have the faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus is the testimony of Jesus. That's what we find in Revelation 19, 10. When one's come to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Jesus Christ, Jesus the head, we the body of the Christ, that is not an angel. John sees it. He's about to worship him. It's the body of Christ coming to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Jesus, looks like Jesus, walks like Jesus, and is the light of the world that will preach this everlasting gospel to all the world for witness in all nations. John was about to worship this man. So see, thou doest it not. And of thy fellow servants and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The only way to understand the words of the book of this prophecy and the revelation of Jesus Christ, that he is in his seals, trumpets, and vials of judgments of God, uh, revealing that he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is, was, and is to come, the Almighty. He's the only Almighty God, the Father of glory, and there's not another to Jesus Christ. That's the bottom line. God is calling us to come together in one. Now, many of you, we have thousands that are downloading this podcast. You need to contact me. We need to work together. God is fitly framing this body together now. If the Lord is dealing with you and you know the leading of the Holy Ghost, then don't procrastinate. Move. Then there, call me or email me. Contact me so we can work together. The body of Christ must Come together. I'm not talking about a denomination here. I'm not talking the nominal, the nominal teaching. I'm talking about the work of the ministry that is uh, totally without denominational walls. The ones that are following the leading of the Holy Ghost. Call me. You can do that at 903. My country code is plus one. 903-746- 4885. I will get right back to you. If you would like to email me, it's sealing God's people at dennisbeard.org. That's my email address. Email me and I will get right back to you where we can meet and work together. Somebody said, Well, I'm not called to go to international right now to Africa and India where the DBM team, that's where we're going and called and have a great work there opened for the work of the ministry. What? You can help. We still have to come together. You may be in a government, or helps. God dealing with you. We need to meet the body of Christ working together in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Again, email me at sealinggodspeople at dennisbeard.org. Visit me or the seven books I've authored 
at dennisbeard.org website there, sealinggodspeople.org, sealinggodspeople.com, jcic.tv, any one of these websites that you can contact me and I'll get right back to you where we can work together. God's doing it now. God's sealing his people now. Let's don't miss out. We're praying for each one uh, member in the body of Christ that God will perfect that which is lacking in each one of us, that we all may be presented blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in both spirit, soul, and body. Until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Spirit saying, Behold, the real Jesus. Yes, brethren, we're in the last of the last days. All know that. All that studied any eschatology at all know that. But where are we as far as the body of Christ coming together in the true revelation of Jesus Christ, which is the last book in the Word of God? The revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him to show unto his servants things, which must shortly come to pass, sent and signified it by his angel unto John. We, the body of Christ, have to come together. Those of you that know the voice of God, you know the voice and are led by the Spirit of God. You are the sons of God. You are the ones that God has called for this last day work of the ministry. That last day work of the ministry is through the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for this gospel to be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. For us to come together is critical. I want you to contact me. We need to work together. We've had more downloads on Feeling God's People on our daily podcast than ever before. We know that there are the listeners that know the Spirit of God. You're led of the Holy Ghost. You are the sons of God. And God dealing with all of us to come together as one. So I put it before you. Contact me. We have several different contacts there on uh, social media. Of course, the daily podcast, Sealing God's People, there, simply download the app, tune in daily, as many of you are doing, up in the thousands down. We thank God for you. We need to move. We need to come together. There, you can email me at sealinggodspeople at dennisbeard.org. Again, my email address, sealinggodspeople at dennisbeard.org. Dot org. You can also help send this gospel for the Jesus-only training centers throughout the world where the ministers are crying out for it. They're at dennisbeard.org, our website there, promoting our e-books. There are seven e-books there, and four of them do with the Godhead uh, that God is moving uh, many out of the false doctrine of Trinity into the true revelation of Jesus Christ, the true God and eternal life, Jesus, the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent spirit of God, Jesus' only doctrine of Christ. We have four books on the Godhead. Behold the real Jesus, Christ, the revelation of the Son of God, hear, O Israel, and uh, the eras of the Trinity. These four go into detail about how God works salvation in and of himself. Our God, Jehovah, is our salvation, Jesus. Also, why it is so essential for the soul out in the last days, uh, selling out and why the word of God in the constitution of the kingdom of heaven commands us to sell out. That is... uh, and essential for the true Christian. There we also have the great deception, the 603 score and six, the keys of stigma, exactly what it is, and the manifested sons of God, the true doctrine of the manifested sons of God, which that has been watered uh, down through the 1940s and 50s, saying that it was some great person that was going to lead the body of Christ instead of a body ministry. The work of the ministry is the church of the living God coming together in the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God uh, unto a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. There, Dennis Beard, we have received uh, a visitation from our Lord Jesus Christ on the 19th of January, 2019. Many of you have heard that already. While in Transamerica, Kenya, Africa, saying, Seal my people by my word. 
even as I send my angel ascending from the east, having this seal of the living God, so send I you. Now this is not for any of our righteousness or our holiness that the Lord spoke this to me. It is the body of Christ coming together in the unity of the faith. And well, it's a call there for the body of Christ to come into one mind and one accord now. Please contact me. Some of you are not called, uh, all are called for first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, gifts of miracles, gifts of healings, uh, governments, helps, but all, each individual member of the body of Christ has a specific call for us to do for the body of Christ uh, to fulfill the will of God in these last days with the gospel of the kingdom being preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations. So we implore you, please contact me so we can uh, meet where we can work together. Africa is crying out. We have over a thousand ministers in Africa that have left the false trinity doctrine into the true doctrine of Christ. Not only that, but India, Nepal, Pakistan, Philippines, uh, New Zealand, it's on and on that the ministers are crying out, we need your help. They're asking for the Jesus Only Training Centers to be placed in their nations. We feel the call to do that, but we can't do it alone. It takes us, the body of Christ, coming together. And God will literally put it together and uh, then compact it. Uh, whichever joint supplies to the edifying of itself in love, the body of Christ will come together. And uh, as the Lord has dealt with you individually, and you know the voice of the Son of God, you know the Holy Ghost, you know that there is more in the body of Christ for us to do in the will of God, then please contact me. The information is on your screen. There, DennisBeard.org is our site, website. We also have SealingGodsPeople.org, SealingGodsPeople.com. For those of you that would like to get our daily uh, ministry, uh, I get notices there what we're doing. You can go to JCIC.TV. That's Jesus Christ International Church.TV, the abbreviated JCIC.TV. Join up with us, and I will write to you individually on that website. It's made for the ministers worldwide. There, you simply uh, join up uh, where you're from, and uh, then you will get notices. And the daily podcast, as well as the streaming, and these uh, broadcasts will be uploaded for you there, as well as questions and ask answers, as well as blogs. We need to come together again. Contact me. You can also write me. That is DBM, Dennis Beard Ministries, Post Office Box 2906, Longview, Texas, zip code 75606. Don't procrastinate. You that know the voice of the Son of God, you know the Holy Ghost leading, don't procrastinate. Do it now, and I'll look forward to meeting you. Till the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold, the real Jesus. <laughs>